Okay, welcome back. From here on in, we're in demonstration mode. This is the fun part. Now, for starters, I want to remind you of the installation and deployment runbook hosted in the Cloud Academy GitHub OpenShift Vote App Demo repository. This contains the entire end-to-end -end instruction set to create not only a new OpenShift cluster, but to then also deploy our sample cloud native voting application into it. The runbook consists of steps 1 through to 30. I will continue to reference this runbook throughout the duration of the full demonstration. Having this available will allow you to watch and review each of the steps performed and, additionally if chosen to, complete the steps within your own environment. OK, let's proceed. In this demonstration we're going to cover steps 1 through to 5. These steps combined will be used to spin up a new OpenShift 4 container platform cluster running on the AWS cloud. In particular, we're going to use the OpenShift installer command line utility to orchestrate the cluster provisioning process. Step 1 requires you to log into the cloud.redhat.com web portal. You will need to log in with your own Red Hat credentials. If you need to register, then do so now. Now, the reason we need to access the cloud.redhat.com web portal is to retrieve a pool secret, which is tied to your Red Hat account. This allows Red Hat to track your OpenShift 4 cluster subscriptions. Let's open up the Red Hat Cloud Portal. Within the cluster section, I'll choose AWS for the infrastructure provider, but take note here of the other available options. I'll then go with the Installer Provisioned Infrastructure option. In this case, the installer will create all required cluster infrastructure. Nice and easy. Next, we are presented with several options, including the ability to download the installer itself. However, all we need to do is download the pool secret, or copy it to the clipboard. I'll click the Copy Pool Secret option. This will copy the pool secret to the clipboard. I'm now going to store this in a temp file within Visual Code, so that I can reference it later when I get to step 4. Now moving on to step 2. Let's install the OpenShift installer client by copying the following commands. Jumping into the local terminal, I'm starting out in the demo-openshift folder, which is empty. OK, next I'm going to paste the commands to download, extract and copy into the user local bin folder, which is configured on my local path. Next, let's now run the OpenShift installer command without any parameters, to confirm that it is available. Excellent, it's ready to use. Here we can see how it should be used in terms of the parameters and inputs, etc. that it expects. Let's now query the version of it, like so. Moving on to step 3, let's now generate and scaffold a new installconfig.yaml file. The installconfig.yaml file contains all of the OpenShift cluster configuration that we want applied. I'll copy the OpenShift install command here and execute it back within the terminal. We are then presented with a sequence of menu options asking us for details like where the cluster should be created, the region it should be created within, and the pool secret that we retrieved earlier. When this command completes, a new installconfig.yaml file will be created and placed within the current directory. Let's now display the contents of this file like so. This demonstrates how to scaffold and generate the basic structure required. I'll first take a backup of this file. And then, moving forward, we are simply going to overwrite this file with the configuration as declared in step 4. Let's now open this file up within Visual Studio Code. We need to edit and update some of the configuration. In particular, I'll update and add the pool secret that we retrieved earlier. I'll also add in an SSH public key, which will allow us to SSH into the master and worker cluster nodes later if we need to. The SSH public key can be extracted from an existing private key by using the SSH keygen command. Make sure to save the updated installconfig.yaml file. Now, 
let's take the opportunity to review some of the configuration declared within this file. The cluster config is designed for demonstration purposes, motivated primarily by reducing running costs, since we are in demo mode. For starters, we are provisioning the master and worker nodes in a single availability zone. We are using the m4.xlarge for both the master and worker nodes. We've decided to configure a root volume of 100 gigabytes using the GP2 volume type. The cluster network is configured with an IP overlay for the pods using a CIDR of 10.128.0.0/14. Each node within the cluster gets a slice of this CIDR, in this case a slash 23 host prefix, allows approximately 512 IPs to be available for pods on any one node. The machine CIDR 192.168.0.0/20 is the address space that the VPC or virtual private cloud within AWS will be provisioned with. The network type is set to use the default OpenShift SDN plugin. In this case, OpenShift will be configured to use a VXLAN technology to implement the IP network overlay used within the cluster. The service network setting is set to use a 172.30.0.0/16 address range. This means any of the cluster service resources you provision will draw an IP from the CIDR range. Now that we have updated and saved our install config.yaml file, we are ready to launch. Let's go ahead and do this. I'll copy the create cluster command from here and then run it back within the same directory containing the install config.yaml file. Okay, the OpenShift cluster provisioning process has begun. Now, this takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Rather than watching the entire provisioning process, let's jump ahead to the point where the full provisioning process has completed successfully. Don't be too concerned if warnings are logged out during the provisioning process, as the cluster is likely to still be running through its bootstrapping scripts in the background. Given enough time, it will converge to a fully functional cluster, as you can now see. Okay, the cluster has been successfully provisioned as per this installed complete message. We can also see in the output that several of the cluster particulars are logged out, such as the URL for the OpenShift 4 Web Administration Console, together with the credentials to log in. We can now navigate into the new auth directory and examine the cluster credential files like so. The cube admin password file contains the password for the temp cube admin user. The cube config file, on the other hand, contains information about the cluster, users, namespaces, and possible authentication mechanisms to connect to the newly formed OpenShift cluster. If we now jump over into the AWS console, we can see the underlying cluster infrastructure resources which have been created to support the cluster. In the EC2 service, we can see four m4.xlarge instances, three for the master nodes and one for the worker node. Under load balances, we can see two new network load balancers and one new classic load balancer. Navigating into Route 53, we can see a new DNS hosted zone with nine newly populated records created for the purposes of resolving cluster traffic. As per step five, let's now quickly try accessing the OpenShift 4 Web Administration Console. I'll retrieve the URL and credentials from the terminal output. I'll jump over into my browser and launch the web admin console like so. Ignore and proceed past the SSL warnings, since we're just in demonstration mode. In production, you would create and configure proper certs, but for now let's just ignore these. Finally, we get the login page to the OpenShift admin console. I'll need to copy the cube admin username and password and then present them within the login page. As you can see, we have successfully authenticated into the cluster with the temporary cube admin credentials 
and the dashboard view is now presented to us. Here we can see the current cluster aggregated CPU memory storage and network stats. The admin console provides us with the ability to control many aspects of the cluster. On the left hand side we have the main menu for navigating within the cluster. Options include home, operators, workloads, networking, storage, builds, monitoring, compute and administration. Now one common pattern you'll see throughout the remainder of this demonstration is that there are multiple ways in which you can create and manage cluster resources, either by performing point and click operations within this administration console, or alternatively using the OC command line utility. Okay, that completes steps one through to five. Next, I'll show you how to download and set up the OpenShift OC command line utility.